Oh my, that was loose. Oh my God, they're all loose. Every ground screw is loose by finger. That should be a crime. What the hell? I think it's loose. Wow, that spark plug was loose, guys. What a hack shop. Welcome back to another day off, folks. We got Josh's F25 X3 with an N55 engine, X drive, all wheel drive. As you can see, the front end is a bit ripped apart. I'm in the middle of a headlight diagnosis. That's probably gonna be a separate video from this, but we're gonna get tearing into the engine side of things today. I inspected this thing about a week ago and got a list going with Josh. It needs a valve cover replacement. That valve cover is seeping down on the passenger side. The oil filter housing and the oil cooler assembly is leaking down onto the upper radiator hose and the belt tensioner assembly. So we're gonna be resealing all of that replacing the upper hose, replacing the belt, plus the tensioner assembly. We're also gonna be doing a fresh oil change, getting the cooling system serviced, and we're also doing a trans service as well. I'm just waiting on a few more parts to come in. We got a brand new L-ring valve cover ready to go on the N55. We got some BMW coolant, seven quarts of BMW oil, man filter. We got an oil pressure switch for the oil filter assembly. We have all new hardware for the oil filter housing as well. New oil cooler O-rings oil filter housing gasket plus oil cooler gasket, uh, new hardware, new bolts for the oil cooler. We also have new hardware for the centric shaft sensor gasket. Got a freshie one of those right here as well. New belts from Continental. We also have an INA tensioner and idler pulley kit. We have a genuine BMW crankcase vent hose and an upper radiator hose from Ryan. The only thing left I'm waiting for is the trans pan kit with the filter and all the trans fluid. We got our work cut out for us. Let's start tearing into this bad boy, making some progress. Now these headlights are loosely mocked up just so I could do some testing, but I'm gonna pull them out just to give myself some more room. I'm waiting on a uh, module to come in so we can get these headlights figured out. Thinking first item is we'll start tearing into this valve cover and we'll just work from the top down. should be a cover that clips over off the top of that, but she ain't there. Get this air intake out of here. Someone left all these charge pipe connections loose. I snugged that one up too when I first inspected the car, but this one was loose too. I tried to be nice, but we're replacing it. Let's get this thing out of here. You wanna be careful when you're pulling this pipe to not put too much stress on this turbo, turbo duct down here, because it's plastic and it gets heat cycled and. It just gets sketchy, it can break. Yeah, someone was definitely in here. This Torx is left loose. They didn't put that back bolt in and the cover to this piece is missing. I think they missed the uh, power wire too, that big thick one it runs back there. I'm gonna mislabel any of these, just tape them. You know, this one just says rear vacuum. The eccentric shaft sensor. Got all the ignition coils out. 
take off these ground screws. Oh my, that was loose. Oh my God, they're all loose. Every ground screw is loose by finger. That should be a crime. I've seen this fry a DME on an N63. Oh my God, every ground is loose. What a hack shop. I found so much loose stuff on this car. Whoever touched it sucks. I had a coworker do a N63 valve cover. They left a ground, a ground wire here loose on the cylinder head and it fried the DME. And they left all three of these screws loose on the harness. Can't afford those types of mistakes on these engines. They will eat you alive with problems. Unacceptable. Now for these injector wires, honestly they just pull out, but if you want to, you can push the tab in with the plastic with the pocket screwdriver. And they're pretty well molded so you can see which ones go to which. Look at all that room. I'm gonna vacuum her out real quick. Little cheat code I like to do is just get a pry bar in here and just bend that bracket down a little bit. Give yourself a little room. I crack this fuel rail and we're gonna hit all the injectors here. Crack all those loose and we're gonna pull this common rail out. Grabbed a dry chem extinguisher just in case things get wild. Don't have one in the garage. All the lines are disconnected at the injectors. There's this harness that clips into here, which we need to get pulled out. We can pull this vacuum line off. It just goes down onto the vacuum pump, so it's easy to remember. So once you get that harness out of there, then we need to take these clips out, which usually break, but pull them off from the back. Give them a wiggle, right? Cause they clip on like this. They got this little notch. Sensor off the back. Some bolts that hold on that fuel rail. Now this whole rail can come up and out. Just uh, cover up the openings with the towel. Just make sure it stays nice and clean. Always a great idea to cover up the injectors. You don't want any debris falling down into these ports. Hey, well, everything's looking real good under the valve cover, some brake cleaner. You start wiping up this oil on the mating surfaces. Got to have a clean mating surface in the garage and in the bedroom. Gasket feels good. Now I put these valve covers on dry, no lube, no, no silicone, no Cural T, no nothing. What an easy install on this chassis. All right, y'all, valve cover is snugged up. We are good to go and we can start reassembly.
A little bit of sill glide on the eccentric shaft sensor seal. I renewed the hardware on this because these cut down into the valve cover, and so I like to replace them with the seal. Now before I put these ignition coils back in, you can see this spark plug tube is nice and clean. This one has a lot of soot. Maybe it had a cracked plug in the past. I'm gonna pull it just to inspect it real quick. And for these N55 spark plugs, you need this, it's like a 12.14 millimeter socket. What the hell? I think it's loose. Wow, that spark plug was loose, guys. I just tightened it. So we were getting a vacuum leak, or we were, get, we were losing compression through that cylinder. Oh my goodness. There's so much stuff left loose on this car. I'm glad we're getting into it for Josh, but it's just unacceptable. Look at all that soot. And that's exactly why when I pulled a cylinder number one ignition coil, it was all black. I'm glad we caught it. I don't have a spark plug on hand, so I'm gonna put them back in right now. It's an NGK. That cylinder was losing compression, literally through the spark plug tube. Crazy. Check out this cylinder number one ignition coil. All sooty. That's what it used to look like. Gonna give these all a squirt. Wet silicone. All right, next is going to be this stupid foam. Before charge pipe goes in, we need to swap this crankcase vent hose. Lube this seal up with a little bit of seal glide. Okay, I think that's everything for now, and I believe we can fire this puppy up, so. Well, everything seems to be running well so far. Had a check engine light, but it was just for DMTL and outside air temperature sensor which is currently unplugged from the front bumper so looking good I'm gonna check things out with a flashlight but so far so good no no rough running no fuel leaks nothing yet it is a new day and we are back on the x3 as you can see by the cold start the valve cover repair was smooth we have no issues with anything related to the valve cover repair. So now that I get a good solid start on that, it's time to start tearing into the oil filter housing. We're going to need to get the oil drained out as well as getting the coolant pulled. That way we just don't make as much of a mess. So let's get started there. Now for these N55s, you do need an oil cap, N52s, N54s, 55s, stuff like that. It's this AST V410 cap in case you want to get the part. I always like to crack them slow too, because if you take them off too fast, you'll just start dumping oil down the side of the filter housing and you'll make all sort of a mess.
Doesn't look that great, honestly. Looks like there's a bit of metallic material floating down in it. So before we go too far, I'm gonna cut this oil filter open and uh, we'll take a look at the filter. So here we have an N55 oil filter. Now from my experience, when I was at the shop working on these, these N55s are extremely prone to rod bearing failure. So are the S65s, the S85s, the N20s. Um, and that's about all the experience I had on rod bearings with those engines. It's possible that the N63s do it too, um, but I haven't been around them long enough to uh, remember properly. But anytime I do an oil service on any of those engines, S65, S85, N55, or an N20, I always cut the oil filter open to look for rod bearing material inside the filter pleats. You know, sometimes you can really ruin someone's day, but I'd rather know that my engine is starting to eat itself alive than uh, continue to throw money into it to try to make it a nice, reliable car, right? And so I wanna get this looked at for Josh. So I just cut the tops and the bottoms off of it like that. We can split this thing open. Let me get a light over here so we can get a better look. It's hard to say if it's bearing material without an oil analysis, but I'm not seeing anything shiny. I'm not seeing any major signs of any rod bearing material, so I'm gonna call this filter a pass for now. Um, and we'll just keep looking as we keep picking through this engine. Boom, doing oil service like a ninja. All right, next I'm gonna take my fluid evacuator and start pulling this oil out of the filter housing because I don't want it to leak and make more of a mess. Oh, wow. Shame on me for not checking, but check this out. All right, guys, well, this is on me. Um, we definitely have some oil and coolant mixing inside the bottle, but I have seen the oil coolers and the oil filter housings mix oil and coolant inside of there once these seals go bad because it does have oil and coolant running through it. Let's get these evacuated, see how much we can get cleaned out, but I should have checked the coolant content prior to uh, tearing into the car, getting into repairs, so that one's on me for sure. More pulling power. Well, it ain't perfect, but it's looking better. All right, we're gonna need to pull this support bar here so we can get this cooling fan assembly out. Get this bar out of here. Right on. How's this radiator looking? It's looking good. So I got the oil pressure sensor disconnected and you can see that little Torx head bolt right there. Because of that one, we have to take this entire intake manifold and at least crack it loose to get access to that bolt. So that's probably what I'm gonna focus on next. Also check out the amount of oil that was pushing out of that oil pressure sensor into this harness. So. I'm glad we have a replacement sensor. We're gonna to need to get through and spray this harness out as well because this oil is gonna start chasing this harness and causing issues. I'm gonna to try to do the bare minimum to get this thing cracked loose because we don't need to DC everything on here. We just need to get enough room to where we can get this thing cracked back to get access. technically undoing some work I did before but you know I, I wanted to run the car after the valve cover replacement make sure there was nothing that I missed it's not my favorite design I know I'm a little I know I'm pretty good but it's not my favorite design that's for sure well let's DC the charge pipe 
And then uh, I'm gonna start cracking bolts loose and see if I can wiggle and get access to that bolt. At least most BMW manifolds are 11, and these are 11s. Studs, all five of them are in the rear. Next is I'm gonna use an E-Torx and I'm gonna pull these studs out of the cylinder head. These rear five studs. So we got all the intake manifold nuts out, nuts and bolts, and I just pulled all the studs. From my memory, we should be able to slide this puppy and move her just enough to get access to that bolt right there. This is also a great time to get down and look at the back of the intake valves, which is what we'll do next. All right, now that's about the best view I can get you with the camera in focus. You can see the intake valves here on cylinder number one. They're actually looking really good. The valve stem itself has a little bit of buildup towards the top. Now this is extremely common on the N54s and N55. Now the reason for the carbon buildup on the N55s and the N54s is they went to a direct injector design, right? So the injectors go directly into the combustion chamber through the cylinder head. N52s, all that stuff, the injectors are on the intake manifold. So as that fuel gets mixed with the air, it bypasses touches the back side of those intake valves and then goes into the combustion chamber. So you always see those commercial Chevron with Tecron, clean your intake valves, clean your injectors. Well, none of that applies on direct injection motors. On N54s and N55s, it's very common to do a uh, engine decarb service where a lot of people will take walnut blaster, they'll pull the intake manifold and then they'll go through and clean all the intake valves while they're still in the cylinder head. However, with this car, 130K, I'm really pleased to see that amount of carbon on the intake valves. It's not due for carbon cleaning, which is really good news for Josh, and I don't have to buy the tools to do it. it has a little bit of buildup on the stem like we saw, but all in all, it's still plenty good enough to keep running. And once that builds up even more, then we can address it at a later date. Another good way to check for the carbon buildup if you do have one of these engines is to pull a spark plug and then rotate the engine until you have the intake valve down and then you can borescope down through the spark plug hole and see if there's any carbon buildup on the back side of that valve. We can start DC in this oil filter housing. First thing I'm gonna do is pop these E-Torx bolts out and we're gonna separate this oil cooler from the housing. Three E12 bolts to get this oil cooler off. Crack this puppy loose. It's gonna make a little bit of a mess. Moved out over here. Let's get this upper radiator hose out. And this is exactly why we're replacing it because these oil filter housings leak down onto here. And based off the color, you can see it's starting to brown. This, this upper radiator hose needs to go. Just lever them off. Doesn't take much. Look at that, because we evacuated the, the coolant out of the bottle, we barely lost any fluid. This upper radiator hose already came apart. That's the collar that holds the O-ring in place. This one off. And just wiggle up and down. Now you see how this is starting to turn brown? This is what you need to look for when you're inspecting your plastic hoses. Once you see this brown material, let me see if I can show you, but this stuff gets extremely brittle around these creases. It's connecting this oil filter housing. Take this top E10 out. Now we can crack this back E10. Catch the screw. The last bolt is this little E10 down here. Now, there's a couple ways I like to do it. You're gonna have a really hard time getting a quarter inch socket and an E10 down there. I like to take a non-ratcheting eight millimeter wrench and eight millimeters fit E10s perfectly if you use a 12 point. So that's a really good way of getting in there and cracking that thing loose. Or I bought this kit specifically for this job has an E10, but it also has a collar on the back, a six point hex. So you can slip that over and then you can hit it with a wrench and you can get a really good bite on it that way as well. So just my little two cents. You can use a ratcheting eight millimeter wrench too, which I'll do right now. As long as it's an eight millimeter 12 point, you can get it to go. Now you can't 
take this bolt out all the way unless you have the oil filter housing cracked loose. So you want to do this little bottom E10 last because as you'll see, I'll back it out and then eventually it's going to hit the plastic fitting for this thermostat hose. So back it out as much as you can. And then once it starts to contact, break the seal loose, push the housing up, and then continue to take that out. And that will prevent you from having to disconnect that thermostat hose to get good access. Voila. Take our bolt out. Boom. There's our housing. There's our gasket. You can tell this was really smoked. Look how flat and molded into the housing that is. I'm just going to wipe this down real quick. We're going to do some further cleaning on this because we have to get all this old gasket material off the cylinder head. So before I get this thing out and put it in my redneck parts washer, I want to get this old gasket picked out of here. This thing is hard. Oh yeah. Way blown out. Big old lips on her. Oil cooler gasket too. All right, housing's all cleaned up. Give her a wipe down. Take some Scotch-Brite and hit this connection for the upper radiator hose. Because you can see there's a little bit of build up there from where the O-ring used to sit. And if you can feel it and it feels a little rough, just give it a little bit of scuff. Housing going back in. So, you can drop it on, and if you'd like, you can throw this top bolt in. But don't snug it down. Just put it in a couple threads. Next bolt is going to be the lower bolt. And just like how we took it out, you're going to need to lift it up, get it started. Snug this one up first. Don't torque it yet, but get her snug. I get these two top bolts torqued or at least close to and then I'll try to match that other torque by hand. So about 15 on the back one, 15 on the front. All right, that's a good torque. We'll go to 22 on the top and the back. Okay, 22. All three torque, 22 newton meters. Manifold back down so nothing gets in there. Same story as the oil filter housing. Clean the old gasket material up off of the oil cooler. Use the last little bit of brake cleaner I got to clean this gasket surface. Gasket. also have all new bolts for the oil cooler. Torque spec for these, we're looking for 16 newton meters. I recently saw a video that says when you torque something, you should hold the bolt for three seconds. You guys ever heard of that? We also got a new oil pressure sensor in the kit, which I'm happy about because this thing was definitely leaking. So 24 mil wrench. Oil pressure sensors are notorious for pushing oil through uh, the harnesses because it's one of the few sensors that's directly exposed to oil pressure. And so this thing must have failed internally and was pushing oil out the connector. Got a brand new sensor, genuine BMW. And then another interesting thing is whenever I've seen these gray bags, I've always been told that these are anti-static bags to protect the components sensitive device for handling electronics. So these like gray tint bags are anti-static bags. Just snug and a little turn. Next step is getting these rear five studs reinstalled. So yeah, don't run these in with an electric tool. Just 
put them in by hand, barely snug them down. They don't need a lot of torque because the nut is what's going to be doing the torquing. The little ratchet so you don't over torque them. This is one of my favorite reasons why I use a magnetic 11 millimeter socket. Snap-on makes this one, but doing intake manifold nuts, it is a day saver to have one of these on hand. Just because dropping one of these nuts when you're trying to get the intake manifold on can be a nightmare. Fifteen newton meters for the manifold. Torqued up. The intake back together. Charge pipe came off, so we'll get that back on. Plug you back in. You can see oil in there in the connector. in. Engine was definitely messy when I got here. Nothing was really routed correctly, but I'm going to do the best I can just to make sure all this harness does look nice and clean. Can get clipped back in here. These hose clamps on the charge pipe were loose. It's crazy. I couldn't believe it wasn't throwing a check engine light. Now before we get too far, I think this is a perfect opportunity to smoke test this car. We've had the intake manifold off, charge pipe off, all these vacuum hoses. So let's get some smoke in her. But check this out. AutoLine Pro came out with a new intake adapter. This thing looks like the money. So they came out with a new bladder intake adapter design, which is great. And look at that. They even come with an extra bladder, which is huge. I've had smoke testers pop leaks in these before and it's a nightmare to source them. So it's really cool that it comes with a spare. Oh, wow. That's way better than my other one. Well done, AutoLine. Well done. Now before we smoke this thing, I'm going to get the filter back in it. And then on top of that, I'm also going to take some fresh oil, BMW 030, and I'm going to prime this oil filter a bit because these N55s are notorious for spinning rod bearings. And I'm going to tell you guys some more about that later on. We're going to go over the uh, startup procedure after an oil filter housing. I want to get this oil cap back on because I want to uh, make sure the engine's nice, sealed up and tight, but I do want to pre-fill this. New O-rings on the cap, of course, with uh, lubricated with wet silicone. 25 newton meters on the cap. I'm going to be using the AutoLine Pro Shop Series here, which has a built-in compressor, which I've been loving. Power, ground, heat, and auxiliary. Get that little compressor running. Look at that. Five seconds later, we got smoke. This thing heats up quick. Then just go to our intake boot adapter. Boom, that's it. Looks like we're leaking out of the uh, fitting here on the charge pipe, so I'm going to have to bury that in a little bit deeper, bypass that seal. Oh, cool. It's a push-down release. It's not a twist. That's pretty slick. You just want to be careful because there's that mass airflow sensor in there, so you don't want to... Uh, jam this thing up against it and potentially hurt it. But we'll dig her in a little deeper and pump her up nice and fat. Still leaking a bit. Look at that. Boom. Leak on the back left. And we're even still leaking at the adapter. Give you guys a better look. A perfect reason why we always smoke. Always smoke. We'll go directly into the charge pipe over here get a better seal. Now we're probably getting to about 60 seconds now. All right, well that's a few minutes later and we have zero leaks, which I'm really happy about. Good news for me, good news for Josh. 
We even have smoke coming out the valve cover, which means we add pressure all the way up to the valve cover. We're looking really good. Such a great way to double check your work when you're done, especially on these engines, M54s, uh, M62s, that's another great one to smoke test. Anything that has a lot of vacuum components, a lot of vacuum hoses, charge pipes, intake boots that you're going to be disconnecting. Happy with that. So much stuff was left loose. Spark plug was left loose. Torque screws back here on the bracket. The charge pipe was left loose. The bumper skin was left loose. Before we get this upper radiator hose back on, we are doing a belt tensioner. So T60 half inch socket. Back the tensioner back down. And look at that. We actually have a, a cut in this belt. E12 for the tensioner bolt. Let's break that loose. There she goes. We got a brand new Ina belt tensioner. There she goes. Saw online that it's 40 Newton meters, so we'll give that a try. It should be plenty. Now we're going after the idler pulley. This is a T50, right on the money. New cap. Lift, pull our pin, move our light. Looking really good. Getting ready to get this upper radiator hose back on, but like I did on the oil filter housing, I'm just gonna give this a quick swipe with the Scotch Bright. This is a plastic radiator. And as always, if you guys see my content, you know every hose connection gets a healthy serving of Sil Glide and wet silicone. So I splooge some sill glide on there, get her nice and lubricated inside here. Can't forget the vent hose nipple. Let's see how my poor skills are today. Oh yeah, nailed it. Time to bust out the old snappy cooling system pressure tester. Just like smoke testing and intake, you never know if the cooling system's tight until you put pressure in it. If you guys like to wrench a lot, I highly suggest having a pressure tester. I will link one in the description for an affordable one with adapters. Let's see if this piggy wants to go in easy. Nice, that's a good fit. Hi, sit, lay down, yes, good girl, good girl. Top the coolant off proper. And now we need to do the bleed procedure. Okay, so to bleed anything with the electronic water pump, ignition on, we got a full tank of gas so we know ignition's on. We need to go to defrost, max heat, and then speed all the way down to one foot on the accelerator all the way down to the floor hold for about 10 seconds ignore all those beeps that is the front bumper being disconnected now we heard the electronic water pump kick on she be spraying you can see the stream sometimes with the expansion tanks that have that little needle float they the stream hits it and it sprays all over the place so I like to just drop the cap on top so it doesn't spray. But then just let the water pump do its thing for like five to 10 minutes. You can get this brace back on.
And we'll get this air duct back in. Evacuate to the max line. Install our little cap. Install our schnubbers into the schnubber hole. The weather stripping. Oh, I forget. This 030 is so thin. Okay, story time. I did an N55 oil filter housing a couple years ago on an X5 and I took her out for a road test. It was running fine. I got on it through an intersection. All of a sudden the car dies. I coasted over to a stop in neutral. I went to go restart the car. Smoke started coming from the engine bay. I ran out, started pulling the panels off, trying to figure out what was going on. I did not prime the oil system after doing the N55 oil filter housing gasket. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen them out there on the forums. FCP Euro put a post out about it. I'll try to link that in the video but they changed the design of the oil filter housing on the N55. And so it does take a while for them to get primed up with proper oil pressure. When I took that car out for a road test, it spun the rod bearings, it completely seized the engine, and the thing locked up like a brick. I had to get it towed back to the shop, order an N55 used engine, go through the entire original engine, make sure that anything that had oil flowing through it was replaced, and then got that car back on the road. It was an absolute nightmare. So I looked up the priming procedure for this engine and they're calling to remove all the injector connectors for the direct injectors on the valve cover. Now I just got this thing completely buttoned back up and so I really don't want to tear it apart again, but I am no doubt going to be priming this oil system before I fire up the car and take her for a drive. Well guys, I did some digging and uh, the diagram for the fuse block is not there. I also went to the rear to the second fuse block location the diagram for the fuse block back here is not there. I got a hot dinner date, so I'm gonna go hop in the shower, get ready for that, but we'll be out here tomorrow morning getting back after it, and we're gonna get this oil system primed, fire this puppy up, see how she runs, wait for some Now, like parts. I said, I really do not wanna pull these injector connectors. However, I did find a fuse diagram online, and so I'm going to attempt to pull fuse 139 and 184 and see if that DC's power to the fuel pump. See my reminder here to prime everything up before I fire it up. Now, the car might start because there is residual pressure left in that fuel rail. However, if I did pull the correct fuses and if this technique works, um, it should die or stall out. So we'll try to crank it. If it fires up, we can turn it off, cycle the key, do all that good stuff. There's not really a big risk of spinning a rod bearing while we're at idle. I already pre-filled the oil filter and the oil filter housing. It's got full oil capacity in it. So at least when I did have this issue happen and I did spin a bearing after oil filter housing repair, it was when I'd gotten on the gas and the oil wasn't primed up yet. Let's see what happens. There we go. Just had to get rid of the uh, residual fuel pressure. I'm gonna let the starter cool off for a minute. If you are going to try this technique, just keep in mind that fuel pressure in the rail will be a factor. However, pulling those two fuses did kill fuel pressure because I could hear it stumble out as it lost pressure to the rail. So it's better than disconnecting all the fuel injector connectors in my opinion, because I didn't want to undo all that work I just did. All right, now we can reinstall our 20 amp 
and I just found what had the uh, the gas icon on the fuse diagram online. This car doesn't have a diagram. Someone took it out, um, but I just pulled the two that were associated with the fuel pump icon, which was this five amp right here, which is number 139, and this one right here, which is 184. Fuses are back in. Let's see if she wants to build fuel pressure and fire. There she goes. Everything's looking really good. Running really good too. She's running a lot smoother than when I first got the car. That is for sure. Now I did forget to install these, so we need to put these back onto our new valve cover. We are back and we got parts. We have a trans pan and filter kit with all new hardware and fill plug and seven quarts of ZF fluid, number eight. Also, if audio quality is any different, I had to switch to my backup microphone. I broke my primary, but I got new microphones on the way, so don't worry. I'm still not too happy with that height, so I'm going to try to get these six ton jack stands under the front. All right, let's get started. So. I'm just going to bend this heat shield out of the way because you'd have to disconnect this uh, exhaust mount too, but I'm just going to bend it out of the way. We'll bend it back afterwards. No big deal. A 10 millimeter Allen for the drain plug and then like an 8 mil for the fill plug. So let me grab those. We'll get started. All right. Fill plug coming loose. There we go. Now we start cracking these puppies loose. So we just have one, one bolt left in the front and this should start to hang. Now let's back this front bolt out a little more. There we go. Controlled chaos right there. Cool. So now we can see the valve body, the O-ring on our pan stayed in place. So our filter surface, our filter orifice is nice and clear. Get this wiped down with some brake cleaner, scotch bright it, of course, and then get this new pan on. All right, new pan going up, as you can see, built-in filter assembly. I lubed this up with some Seal Glide and wet silicone like I do with every seal. And time to get this puppy up. So just get her lined up and you can feel that O-ring hang up and just push up with good steady pressure. Boom, feel that thing pop in there. Okay, 10 Newton meters. Now the drain plug is like eight newton meters plus one, and so I'm just gonna check it to 10. Bend our heat shield back. Time to start filling until we get a trickle out, and then we're gonna loosely cap the fill plug, but we got a few bottles to go before we get there. So once we get her spilling out, which took three liters on this one, throw that fill plug back in and you can just leave it loose. I just like to snug it finger tight real quick. To go up top, fire it up, 
run through the gears for five seconds each, get the transmission up to temperature. The trans is a little noisy at three quarts, so I'm pumping it open to uh, get some more fluid in while I let it warm up. So right now I'm at about 40 degrees Celsius, so that's right within range. Want to be below 50 degrees. So now that all those conditions are met, we're going to start to get the final fill. Heads up, Sage. I am tuckered out. I need a smoothie and a sandwich or something. So that's what I'm going to do. We got the underbody panels all sprayed off. We got the undercarriage nice and clean. We also cleaned the top end so it's ready for detailing. And in total, we did the valve cover replacement. We did a tensioner assembly. We did the idler pulley. We also did a belt replacement. We resealed the oil filter housing. We resealed the oil cooler. And we did a full trans service with a new pan and filter kit. Of course, the front end is going to stay torn down until we get that new driver module for the passenger side, which is now in the driver's side, but that should be showing up in the next day or two. After that, we'll get the front end buttoned up. We'll get this thing over to someone who has ISTA and get that driver module coded as well as initialize the adaptive headlights, and we will be good to go. Josh's X3 is now revived. It's running so much better, and this thing has a lot better chance of staying on the road now without any future issues. I'm going to hop inside and get some lunch and take care of myself, but I hope you guys enjoyed or I hope you learned something new. And as always, folks, I will see you on my next day off.